Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about um, 2023 uh, League of Legends LOL esports uh, fantasy slates um, and betting slates. Um, my name is DFS Chan. Um, for those of you who may not have seen me before, uh, but uh, thanks to True DFS, um, I'm able to make these videos to talk about, um, you know, one of my passionate things in life, um, League of Legends uh, that I watch. And I actually got to go to the World's Tournament semifinals in Atlanta last year. And it was like one of the most amazing experiences um, that I've ever had uh, with my friends. Um, so, yeah, it's welcome to everyone. everyone. Um, Happy New Year. Um, I'm excited to kind of to kind of talk about um, League of Legends and hopefully be informative and share some insights and we can all be profitable, you know, from, from these slates. Um, so so uh, for those of you who may not know, um, the LPL League is in China and the game times are usually at real late at nighttime um, or early morning on the weekends typically. Um, and on the weekdays as well, um, some some games, but most of the rosters are posted. All of the rosters are actually posted here on the LPL Twitter account, um, and the starters for each games will be posted in advance um, on the Chinese social media. Um, and I'll talk about some issues with that, and I'll talk about how we can best approach that as well because as you can see like each team's roster has more than five players and in each game only five players can play and start um, so we'll see how we can mitigate any substitution risk or start uh, starter confirmation risk so yeah um, if you have a chance please please hit the like button and then also uh, subscribe to the true dfs channel if you can um, that would help us a lot and help me stay motivated to make these videos um, as often as I can. Um, so yeah, it's a three game slate tonight. Um, I think it's going to be a very interesting slate. Um, as you can see here, FPX versus WE is a coin flip according to Vegas. Um, it has the total kills over under of 24, um, which measures the kill upside um, um, for these matchups. And um, the odds are interesting because I think I disagree with a lot of them, especially in the earlier in the season, um, because really these odds and uh, numbers are projections are based on last year's data and also just like a little combination of the players that um, have joined um, the teams in the off season. So I think that's an interesting dynamic to kind of attack um, from the betting and fantasy standpoint. Um, and then uh, anyone's legend versus T uh, Invictus Gaming IG is the second matchup of the slate um, has the total kills over under there of 25. Um, anyone's legend is slightly favored. So we'll see if that stays true to my prediction as well after my analysis. And then BLG versus JDG is the marquee matchup of the night um, where JDG has formed a super team with bringing in by bringing in ruler at 80 carry and then Knight at mid position, you know, at, you know, while keeping Kanavi and 369 um, in their roster on their roster. And BLG has formed a pretty good team, darn good team as well. And they've won the preseason tournament and Demacius cup. So BLG is actually a no joke. Um, I, 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 they actually got rid of some players that I didn't really like. So I do think I have, I do have high hope, higher hopes, uh, hopes for BLG. Um, but I think JDG's talent is uber, uber talented on that roster. So we'll see what happens there. And JDG, as you guys know, uh, most of you guys know last year was had one of the highest kill upsides, um, and was their games were very bloody um, last year. That's really good for fantasy purposes. So as you can see, they have a total kills over under of 26, which is the highest on the slate. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go through each team's roster and starter kind of projection. And based on that, I'll make my prediction um, and uh, who's gonna win. And also if I think the kill upside will be there for us to play these teams. 
FPX versus WE. Um, so I'll go through that here. So FPX is here. Um, I actually think they're not going to do well this season, um, just given the fact that their jungler is very weak. Um, Hacker um, came over to FPX um, from OMG and Ultra Prime, I guess now, uh, most recent one. And then Hao Ye is another jungler that they have. They have two players in each role, I think, um, except for the mid laner. Um, so I think Hacker and Hao Ye are both kind of weak. I watch Hacker all my life, basically, in the pro scenes, and he is not. He is probably one of the least favorite junglers that I <laughs> that they're on my list um so i just i don't think he's that good in real life but i, I also don't think he's good in fantasy as well how yay is a newcomer you know from their pipeline um fpx minor league team but he just did not perform well <clears throat> in the preseason games that i've watched so i'm not impressed with either of them and as you guys know i'm a huge huge of um huge uh mind that I put a lot of emphasis and on each team's jungler to carry their uh, to kind of increase the team's chances of winning. Um, so I just I'm just not impressed with that. And then their top laner, they have two of them, Shaliahu and Fearness. Fearness came over from LGD. Shaliahu has been there, so I don't know who's gonna start here. Fearness was signed very recently, so we'll see what happens there. So that also kind of tells me that they just don't have a good team like synergy and chemistry quite yet with all these new players coming over. And I don't know who's gonna start. Like Fearness hasn't had a game together as a team at the competitive level with FPX yet. So we'll see what happens there. And then in the mid lane, care is pretty good. So I'll give I'll give FPX that. I like care. And then in the bottom lane, the LWX or Xing Ye. I don't know who's gonna start, but I'm not impressed with either one of them. And Lele at support. So I, I don't know. I'm not impressed with this team. I do think either Hacker or Hao Ye is not gonna be as good as that I would just talk about in Team WE. And even though Team WE last summer split didn't go, uh, didn't win a single series basically, um, <laughs> I do think they will be better. And I mentioned this before, but um, teams that have a lot of returning players do tend to do better earlier in the season because they know how to play with one another and they have, um, an identity they like to play with, which can be beneficial earlier in the season going up against teams that may not know how to play together and may not have an identity on how to win. So I like this roster quite a bit earlier in the season. I think I'm going to smash Team WE quite a bit and I'm going to smash their season long totals over in wins. So we'll see what happens there. Um, I do think they'll have a better season. Biu Biu in the top lane, and then Heng. I'm actually impressed with Heng um, at jungle. I do think he's better than either Hao Ye or Hacker on the other team uh, in this matchup, so I like Heng quite a bit. And then Shanks in the mid lane has been playing pretty well. And then Hope coming from JDG, even though he's had a horrible, horrible Worlds tournament performance, I do think he is uh, motivated to play better. I mean, he he cannot play worse than what he, how he performed in, at the Worlds level. So I do think um, this is going to be a very, very interesting um, Team WE roster and starter. There's a good chance that Demon could start over BOBU in the top lane, but I doubt it earlier in the season. And Iwandi came over from LNG. is really good as well. So I do think it's going to be a good, good test for Team WE uh, as to where, how they what would like to start the season off and stuff like that. And I'm all over Team WE based on that and based on the fact that they have a better jungler. Um, I, this is also data uh, data supported by the fact that um, FPX actually had one of the worst, well, I guess they had worse um, jungling, jungle control percentage. And how Ye started from, for, for FPX in the preseason tournament, as you can see here, um, FPX was like here toward the bottom here. Yeah, it's 49.2%. Um, team WE actually was up here. So I, I, I like Team WE quite a bit. Um, so I'm going to do prediction here. Team W wins 2 to 0. I think the kill upside is going to be interesting. Hang likes to play up, uh, play uh, more aggressively um, than, let's say, like Bei Shang was um, in the last season. 
they just gave up a lot of kills in Team WE when they when they um had a worst one of the worst seasons had probably the worst season statistically um in the summer split. But I think the kill upside is medium. Knowing Shao who likes to play aggressive, it depends on who starts, obviously. But um yeah, Hope doesn't really like to like go in get solo kills and stuff like that in the bottom lane. Oh, hacker. See, like, yeah, I think it's low to medium because both hacker and how yay don't like to, they're not as aggressive junglers that I would like them to be for fantasy purposes. So I think it's medium to low. Yeah, so I'm going to go with that medium to low. All right, but I, I do have a firm stance on Team WE here today. I think that I think on DK uh, DraftKings pricing, Team WE is projected to be the underdog. So I think that helps out a lot in terms of roster building, uh, lineup building. So we'll see what happens there. And the second matchup of the slate is Team uh, or Anyone's Legend versus IG. Uh, this is very interesting match. This is a this is a very interesting matchup um, because I really like Xiao Hao here, but I don't really like the rest of their roster. Right, so. If he can carry, he will carry. But I don't know if that is good enough to beat IG. We'll see. Um, but Xiao Hao is one of my favorite junglers that are up and coming um, in the LPL. So I really like him, and I like their chances every night. Um, even though if, if even if they're an underdog, I do have I do believe in Xiao Hao can carry a game or two um, in that series on any given series. Um, and then the top lane, ZDZ, um, yeah, I mean, he's okay. And then let's see, uh, pins and, man, like, see, I don't like any of these guys. I think Betty's okay. Um, Betty carried, he had a, he had one of the highest kill share percentages um, in the league last season. So I like Betty quite a bit. And Sword Art has, brings experience, but he is a little washed up more washed up than I would like him to be. He went through like the LCS and went through a lot of the teams, the journeyman um, status now landing on one of the bottom tier teams and <laughs> on anyone's legend, formerly known to be with Sooning um, or Weibo Gaming. So I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I like Xiao Hao That's, and Betty. So Jungle eighty carry good players. I mean that can win any games. Um, but let's let's look at um Invictus Gaming and see what kind of changes they made. I know they got rid of Shun Shun X U N um at Jungle and that he used to be one of my favorite players, just like Xiao Hao. But um, IG actually had a decent preseason, I think, um, with the new Korean imports from Dove and Gideon. So Gideon is the new jungler for IG from Korea, and then Dove is the new mid laner uh, from Korea. And then Wink and On, like I said, I mean, IG has also had all, always, always had AD carry support issues all last season. Like they've had like five or six different combinations. Uh, for those of you who may not know this, um, it's always caused a problem for them. Just no consistency, you know, like no identity in that bottom lane. So, but they, and they've kept winking on. And so I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, I do want to know about this YSKM guy. Um, I don't know much about him. So let's see Invictus Gaming's roster here. He is from PC. Okay. Huh. Oh, he's a top laner. I like Nenny quite a bit. Um, Gideon, Dove, Jungle Mid, Synergy there from Korea. On and oh, Wink has permanently changed to support. That's why I was confused. Um, so Wink used to play to carry, but now, and he's tried some support roles last season as well. So that there, I mean, there's some consistency there because On and Wink have played together before last season. Um, and then Gideon and Dove obviously have good Korean synergy there. So IG can definitely do this. Um, I do think Gideon was okay in Korea. Um, he was not the main jungler on that team for KT. So he kind of got pushed out of the team 
um, and join IG. And I want to see how they did. And did he play in the Demacia's Cup? Let me see. I'll check one thing here and then I'll continue. Um, so in Demacia's Cup, they did not play both Dove oh, um, and Gideon. Their jungle is Tianjin, MG. So these were kind of the weak links looks like yeah not great kill participation they were he was on kt with cuz so he got pushed out and he didn't get much playing time and i thought he was okay he was not great um I do want to see in the LCK what how he did. Okay, let me see that. Teams. That's the Masias Cup, LDL, OPL. Nest. They don't have Nest from 2022. Okay. So let's look at LCK and see how he did. Um, in the summer, the jungle he didn't even play a single game in the summer split, right? So, so there is a long layoff as to Gideon. Okay, I want to see the player stats at jungle, how he did compared to other junglers. Oh. But he only played three games in the spring. And he was okay, constantly behind. Yeah, I mean, I think Dove was okay too, like... High kill per oh he was he only played one game. Okay, I want to see summer sandbox right I think sandbox yeah dove like he's not a kid he wasn't a he played top oh yeah he changed from the mid laner to top and he was okay and he's coming back to the mid lane yeah I mean that's interesting I think um. He's going to have to get used to that again. Um, do I think like the, these Korean players are better than av average Korean players are better than average Chinese players? I don't think so. I think the average Chinese player, the level is higher in the LPL. Um, and they're going up against anyone's legend. So Nenny top lane which I like, Gideon, Dove, YSK maybe over, no, then he's going to start, and then winking on. Yeah, I mean, there's some consist. I can see that. I mean, I think, man, that's a, that's a tough one, because anyone's legend, like I said, like, well, do I think Betty and Sword Art is better than On and Wink? Yes. Um, do I think Xiao Hao is better than Gideon? Yes. Um. Do I think ZDZ is better than Nenny? No. Oh, harder and pins. Let me see about them. Anyone's legend. Harder is the substitute. Pins is, is the mid new bin laner, and I don't know much about him. So Dove is not the greatest threat. So yeah, I, I do think anyone's legend should win this. Prediction. Uh AL wins two. To zero. I do think kill upside is gonna be much lower because of the new Korean imports with Gideon and Dove. They don't like to fight that much unless they like change their entire mindset coming over to China. Um 
I want to see how bloody anyone's legend was. Um, and then Wink and On was, I mean, I think they gave up a lot of kills, actually. Let me see if I remember correctly. Um, teams, um, LPL, Summer, anyone's legend. Did they give up a lot of, what, how much kill upside did they have? Yeah, they were pretty high. Invictus Gaming was high as well. And same bottom lane. Hmm. I'm going to say medium to high just based on that. Um, I do think the Korean guys on Invictus Gaming is going to reduce the kill upside. Let me see how fast they played in the Demacius Cup. Anyone's legend. Let's see how, how, did, how did they play the same roster that I just looked at? Yeah, ZDZ, Xiao Hao, Harder, and KP. Yeah, Xiao Hao, as you can see, I mean, he's a stud. Um, he's always involved. So I like that a lot. So play Xiao Hao if you are playing anyone's legend, um, FYI. Let's look at the kill upside, how fast they played. Ooh, these, they played real fast, like the minor league teams here and independent teams. Um, what are we looking at, anyone's legend? They play kind of slow, but they actually perform pretty well. Um, I think this game he played fast, but they had different jungler and mid laner. So, yeah, I'm going to say medium to low again. Sorry. Um, all right, BLG versus JDG. I don't really need to go that much into this one because, as you guys know, probably heard of the BLG changes. Yagao is in the mid lane. He played amazing. And then June uh, is in jungle. Like I said, one of my favorite junglers uh, up and coming. <clears throat> um, so I do think that's a very deadly combo. And then Ben stays in the top lane. So I do think they have a pretty, pretty good um, roster here, Elk. So I do think um, this is going to be an interesting matchup. I think BLG has what it takes to be able to beat them because also because JDG, this is this new, this is a new roster. I mean, 369 in the top lane, Kanavia Jungle, obviously the two remaining core <laughs> players of JDG. And then um, Knight from uh, um, coming over um, in the mid lane, into the mid lane, and then Ruler from Korea. Uh, Gen G. I mean, I think Knight kind of came from top esports. Sorry. And then, yeah. So I think this is a very, very good core. I mean, it is like a super team, right? Like Ruler was probably one of the best AD carry, uh, carries in Korea last year. Um, it's unfortunate that they lost in the world's tournament and Knight, uh, even though he didn't perform as well as he used to last season, he's still one of the top tier mid laners in the league. Um, I do think he will be more motivated to play better with his uh, superstar teammates. So I do think JDG should win, but I think it's more of a toss up, to be honest with you. I really like June. I really like Yagao. And Ben can hold his own against uh, 369 in the top lane. And he's now had a seat, have, have, has one season under his belt with BLG. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think BLG can hold his own. But at the end of the day, if I'm making a prediction, JDG wins two to one, but BLG is a live dog. BLG actually won the Demacius Cup, the preseason tournament. Um, I do think Hill Upside is medium high to medium adg likes to play fast i do think it will continue i think ruler loves to uh skirmish and stuff like that um coming over from korea um i do think knight is a very very solid supportive junk uh mid laner so we'll see what happens there so yeah these are my predictions i hope you guys enjoy the video please please hit the like button if you like the video i'll this, you know, it will keep me motivated to keep making these videos. And please, please hit the subscribe button to our channel to get notifications for these videos. Um, if you have any other questions, please, please reach out to me at DFS Chan. Um, leave me comments or messages and I'll respond to you as soon as possible. Oh, yeah. And yeah, this is an exciting time of the year. League of Legends is starting back up again. Yeah. See you guys next time. Bye bye.